two weeks now. Just been collecting parts to get it ready for this epic. It's not, it's just, I'm putting the stereo in the truck. First things first. Got this nice head unit. It's a boss. I know, I know people are gonna be like, oh, it's boss. You didn't pay $7,000. You only paid $80. Yeah. Eighty dollars, like with change, it was like eighty-nine dollars. Is there anything special about this? Nope. Is there anything crazy about this? No. It's Bluetooth. It's all the your standard stuff nowadays. It, it, expensive doesn't make it sound better. Why did I choose this Boss radio? I've used Boss before. I've never had any problems with them. But then again, I'm not building a crazy competition system. I just want a little more beat in my truck. Like I just want a little more. A little more kick in, in the chest when, when that bass hits. But this is a nice touch screen, so we're upgrading. The old unit is terrible. But this is a definite upgrade. Obviously Bluetooth, obviously touch screen. Um, but the main reason why I bought this, this has, this puts out 80 watts per channel. Most head units are 45 to 50 watts per channel. Uh, 50 watts by four, 45 watts by four. This is 80 by four. So it's gonna put a little more juice to my doors and my rear. And at this point, I'm not putting, I'm not powering any of my component speakers on on an amp. So I, I, I was just looking for the most power output of a head unit. And this one had quite a bit and it was cheap. It was like under $90. So we got it. After that, you're gonna want some speakers. You got your head unit installed, great. It's cool, it's great. But you still got those crappy paper speakers from 1996 that that are like 10 watt speakers. They're, they're brittle, they're old. There's no bass in that truck right now. No low end. Everything below 200 Hertz doesn't exist. Enter Scar Audio. That's right, we got Scar component speakers. Look at these bad boys. Just, would you look at it? Would you just, would you, would you, would you just look at it? Would you look at it? So we got the six and a half Wolfers. Oh, 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 I'm losing it. I'm losing it. We got the six and a half Wolfers with the grill. This is the crossover. And these are the tweeters. So this mounts inside the door panel itself. You won't you won't ever see this. But what this what this does is this crossover splits the signal so that only the lower frequencies and the frequencies you want optimal for this uh, speaker are going to it, and only the high frequencies are going to the tweeters. So you're not overloading it with low end, and you're not overloading this with high end. So this only gives you your, your mid bass, and this is giving you your high end. And you're gonna get a much cleaner, crisper sound with component speakers. Let's take one out and take a look at it. Okay, so this is with, this is what the grill shell looks like. And then there it is. It's a nice fiber, it's a nice fiber cone. Nice rubber surround. It's got this nice hard metal bullet tip in there. It's kind of like, kind of like bras from the 50s. It's got that nice pointy boob in there. Really decent magnet on it. It's got some heft to it. It's got a nice weight to it. They're 100 watt RMS and 200 watts max at four ohms. Uh, it's not wanting to focus too well, but that's that. And then, it comes with all the necessary hardware and, and whatnot to attach it. This is your tweeter. It's real simple. And this is the crossover. It's a very simple operation. You just need to plug in your lead here and then you split the wiring off of, off of this. I'll, sh I'll show you. I'll show you more. I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's easy. So this takes care of the front. This is the doors. Let's talk about the rear. And the rear pillars, you're gonna have these sweet six by nine. We're gonna put these, also Scar Audio, in the rear. More than likely, I'm not using these grills. Matter of fact, I'm not using these grills. I'm, I'm trying to get everything behind the interior panels. But this is what you got. 
It's a two-way. It's got the tweeter built in into the middle. A fiber cone. Nice around. Oh, that's nice. This one, this one definitely has a bit more heft to it, to the magnet. I mean, it's, that's nice. Nice black finish. These are constructed pretty well. And then it is 125 watts RMS and it is 240 watts max at four ohms. So, and eventually because the doors can take 100 watts RMS and this can take 120 watts RMS. Eventually, I will upgrade to an amp that's pushing all the speakers, the doors and the and the rear. But for right now, we don't need it. This combination is definitely going to take care of everything that I need. This is just a sound quality build. I just want it to sound better in the truck. It's a nice vehicle. I got leather interior, the AC works phenomenally now got dark tent in it it's a comfortable ride it rides really well but the music sucks so we need to upgrade that just so it's a, it's a much more comfortable and enjoyable experience a few years ago i owned a chevy colorado in the back of it i had 110 a little 10 inch box it's sealed boss 10 the walmart special nothing crazy just a little base in the truck. Later, I upgraded and I put another tent in, but it was a kicker, one of the kicker comps. Um, it's really nice, they're both nice boxes. One's sealed and one's ported. So I'm gonna throw the boss in the truck just cause I have it for now. Later, we will work on building an enclosure and all that, but I already have one, so why not use it? That being said, here's a boss, 1000 watt. Amp. It's 1100, it's a thousand watts, it's called a thousand watts. Um, this is a mono block. This one, it's just one channel. I'm pulling RCAs from the sub outs on this to here and then powering the sub. That's it. That's all I'm trying to do with this. This is only pushing the sub. We're going to set up the, we're going to set up the crossovers really low on this because I just want, I just want to really push that low end. Um, like I want it to start rolling off around 80 because these doors and the rears, they go down to about 50. So 50 Hertz. So I want to roll my base off like the, the actual sub. I want to start rolling it off around 80 and like start that drastic curve down to where it's buried around 200. What that does is just gives you, it, it just gives you a better profile of sound. So everything is in its place. The tweeters are only playing the highs. The mid bass is only playing the mids. The six by nines are only playing the highs and the mids. And this is only pushing the lows. So therefore, if every speaker is doing one function, it's easier to control everything. It's easier to control all the components separately than trying to control all the components at the same time to make them sound beautiful. If you had a car full of three-way speakers, like if I had or two or three-way speakers, like let's say in the front doors, I had six and a half that were two or three ways, the coaxial, like they're, they're all on there. And, and the same in the rear. Would it sound good? Yes, it would sound good, it would sound better. But I would not really get that fine tune ability that you can get if your tweeters are separate from your mid bass and your mids are separate from your subs and your subs are separate from your full range. It, like everything's in a separate, system then you can control everything separately and you can fine tune better that's my thoughts anyways this one's two ohm uh and it's a class a b two ohm and it's got the bass boost knob so i can put my little my little knob well i've talked enough about it let's look at it all right, it's a box. It's got some wire that we're not gonna use. Um, mm -mm. Probably none of them. I'm using a whole different wiring kit. That's a pretty sizable amp, like it's, it's bigger than I thought it would be. Um, there you go. Boss Audio, it's the Riot. 
M1100. I like Boss. Uh, you know, yes, they're they're cheap, as most people would say, but I think they put out a quality. They put out a solid product. They put out a real quality product. I've never had any problems with it. But then again, I'm not trying to shake the neighborhood. I just want my truck to sound nice. And it's a simple operation. It's just you just one output to positive and negatives to the sub, your fuse. You got your remote ground and and your power here. Over here, we have inputs. These are your inputs, inputs. This is the one, this is this one here, but we're not using that. We're running RCAs direct from the head right into here. That's always the best way to do it. If you have a head unit that you can use RCAs to your amp, that's always the best way to go. This is where your remote plugs in. This is your bass boost, which we're gonna keep that off. This is your crossovers, and we're gonna end up setting this pretty low, around 80. This is your full range or band pass or uh, low pass. So we're gonna do low pass on that because we only want the low, we only want the lows. Then you're gonna have, then here, then this is your gain to actually adjust the level up and down of the amp. And then this is the sensitivity. This is the actual, the, the voltage, imp, this is the input into it. Like it's wanting to know how sensitive it's gonna be. But this pretty much just leave it at, at 100 millivolts, millivolts. But yeah, that's the unit. So you have an amp, but you gotta wire it in. It's, it's four gauge. Do you need four gauge for a thousand watts? I recommend it. I recommend it. This one supports up to 2,500 watts. Why did I get it? Because there's a possibility I'm probably gonna add another sub to it. And this puts me right in that range. 2,000 watts in an extended cab truck is a lot of bass. That's a lot of bass, okay? So, this handles up to 2,500 watts. This, this setup with four gauge wire, it's got nice four gauge and it's got all the connections. So if I expand on this, it's, it's gonna be able to handle it. Even if I just use this amp and I add another 10 to it, okay, it handles it. If I change out this amp and I get a 2,000 watt amp, I still got it. My wiring is still, I, I don't wanna have to rewire. So I just use more than what I need, make it, make it nice and secure, and then I can upgrade my amp and things like that as I go. These are some simple, these are just some side mount battery terminal connections so that I can, cause, cause it's a big diesel. So it uses deep cell batteries that have posts on top and the side. So I'm gonna use the side connections for, um, for the audio. Now, here's a little something that is not a part of the audio system, but it's just something that I wanted to upgrade that I thought would be pretty cool. So in the center console, you know, you have your center console, there's a big piece of wood, right? And that big piece of wood had like, it's, it's like half inch thick, half inch to five eighths thick. So the idea is when I was riding in my, my dad's, my dad has a new, it's like a 2018, 2019, GMC and his center console, it has a place to put your cell phone with wireless charging. I like that feature. I like being able to, you hop in, you throw your phone on there and then there it is charging. Well, I already have this console and it already has this thick piece of wood there. But I like the wood, I think it's cool, it's nostalgic. So I'm gonna route out an area to fit my cell phone and then add this to the bottom. This is some junk I got off of Amazon. It's, I don't like this logo-y thing, but this costs $14. It's all rubber and stuff. I don't, I don't want the rubber. What I want is there's a piece inside here, it's about this big, that that's what's actually doing the charging. This is just two pieces of rubber that have been glued together it's just the, the inside material and the outside shell, right? So I'm gonna cut that out and mount it up underneath. I'm gonna create a nice little pocket mounted up underneath so I have a nice wooden surface, right? So it still retains the wood, right? But it charges my phone. And look, you can reach in here and the whole thing just comes out and it's a good half inch to five eighths thick. So there's plenty of material for me to 
to route out here and refinish it. A nice little pocket for my phone. So once that's in, then I'll run the wire down through the back and down. That's it, that's what I wanna do. Other than that, she's staying very stock. I'm not lifting it. It's not getting bigger wheels. It's not getting anything crazy. It's a 1996 K3500 full wheel drive, 6.5 turbo diesel. It runs well, it rides smooth as silk. It's a one ton, it's a beautiful truck, right? It, and it just rides really well. The other vehicles that I had were purchased solely for the purpose of making hot rods and low riders and things like that and trying to, trying to be creative and make things that are custom, right? My truck, I bought it specifically so I wouldn't do crazy things to it. It's four wheel drive. I can't lower four wheel drive. Don't wanna lower a four wheel drive, but I don't really like lifted trucks and stuff. So I'm not gonna do anything there. It's diesel. I don't really know anything about diesel, so I'm not gonna try to put a bunch of performance mods and stuff on it. It runs well. It feels nice. There's no point of me making it crazy.